Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Behind the Closed Doors. Today we have to workshop a light control. And light control it's all about, well, controlling your light. It's, I think, one of the most important workshops. Now, I have several workshops, for example, smoke and props, working in small sets, uh, glamour, coaching and motion. And all those workshops have different teams. But there's one workshop, well, besides small flash, because that's also, of course, aimed at speed lights. But this workshop is actually aimed at one very simple thing, total light control. So not only just creating something cool, but literally controlling that light. And I think that's one of the things that's often overseen because, hey, that's the basic, right? We don't need to learn that. Now, always remember that 90% of the photographers are controlled by their lighting. In essence, you as a photographer should be in total control of your lighting. So today it's all about that. We're going to do butterfly, distance of light and light fall off. We're going to do shadow transfers. We're going to do accent lighting and working with backdrops, working with the light closer and further away to create a beautiful uh, butterfly effect and a lot more. Today our model is Annika and I would say let's join us for today's workshop light control. And by the way, if you want to know more about light control, we have a video out called the essential lighting techniques. You can get it in the link below. It's really, really interesting. And it goes literally from A to Z in understanding your lighting and of course using light meters. So the video for you guys, it's in English. It's very in depth, but today the behind the scenes video for the essential lighting techniques, the workshop light control. Let's go. First light setup was really, really simple. One Hansel Certo with an open reflector. Now the thing is, I wanted to create the butterfly. So that's actually when you hit your nose from the top, you create a beautiful butterfly under your nose. It's a very, very classical lighting technique. The first thing I did was actually move the light all the way to the back. And whatever you do, you can't get that nice butterfly. And by moving that light closer and angling it more, you literally get that beautiful butterfly under the nose. So that was the first part. After that, we just played around a little bit with wide angles. So making Annika look a little bit more quirky or weird. And actually one of those shots you actually saw in the video. And this was all about just placing that light correctly. Now the next setup from Butterfly is Rembrandt. So let's go to the second set. As a Dutch guy, Rembrandt, of course, is very important. But if you like paintings, make sure you also check out Caravaggio. He's without a doubt the master in using red. Just like a, it's just amazing. Just find Caravaggio. So anyway, in this setup, we try to do the Rembrandt triangle. And the Rembrandt triangle is, of course, light that hits your nose and creates that beautiful triangle over here. Now, of course, with that light setup, you can start to play because if you just use it like that with only one light, 
it will look a little bit boring. So what we did on the other side was actually add an extra strobe and create a beautiful light around her jawline and of course her cheekbones. And in my opinion, I've done this, I think, when I started with model photography, it was one of the first things that I tried to figure out. Like, I really like Rembrandt, but how do I shoot something like that? And the most made mistake is actually that people try to shoot it from the right angle, so in front of the model. And what you actually have to do, if this is your model, and your camera's over here, you make sure that your light is actually hitting your model from the side, creating that beautiful shadow play with your nose, of course. And the light is just hitting slightly over the nose, creating that triangle, because everything else is shadow. This is, by the way, another tip that I give during this workshop. If you want to make great photos, don't concentrate on the lighting. Never ever concentrate on the lighting. The lighting is important, but the shadows, that's where you paint with. Now, a lot of people call photography painting with light. And I don't really agree. I think photography is painting with shadows. Because shadows create mood. Shadows create three-dimensionality. And let's be honest, when you, when you draw, for example, a superhero and you want to draw those big muscles. The drawing itself isn't that hard. It's when you start to do all the shading, all the shadows, the lightful, that's where they spend most of the time and where you can actually see if somebody knows how it works or if somebody just paints something in. And that's the same with compositing. R remember those composite shots where you see that the light on the model is coming from this side and on the buildings it's coming from that side and you're like, why? What's going on? So that's why the shadows are the most important thing. Because if you only look at the light, you will probably forget those shadows. And those shadows tell you everything about angle of light and what not more. So that was set number two. For set number three, we had something really special. So let's go to set number three and see if you can figure it out. <laughs> People that know me know that I don't really like those white backdrops. It's uh, it's something that I've done so many times and well. One of the students actually really wanted to know how to do a white backdrop. So we used two strokes on the back, one strobe on the front and just explained how you meter that white backdrop with reflective metering but also with incident meter reading and also explaining the difference between the main strobe and the back strobe and the whole theory behind it. Now again this is a behind the scenes video, I still give you a lot of information but in the behind the closed doors we don't go really in depth but in short when you close down your aperture four and a half stops something will be r literally almost black when you open up your aperture about two and a half to three stops depending on your camera and dynamic range it will be pure white and when you use a reflective meter you get 18 percent gray so open three stops and it will be pure white so that that's in short uh, when you do the video i will leave the link below again you will actually get that really nice in-depth explanation about how it works and I'll also show you how to set it up. But for the behind the scenes, this is it. So let's go to the next scene. And for the next scene, it was actually one of the questions from the students. And this is what I always do during workshops. People have a question, they do it during the Q&A and I incorporate that question into the workshop. And this one was really interesting and I really made it a little bit more difficult. So let's go to the next set.
I really love that backdrop. There's only one problem with it. It's uh, final and it's, it's wallpaper, but it's incredibly reflective. So I thought, you know what? My student actually wanted to know how do you incorporate strobes with ambient light? Now there's one very, very simple trick for this. Always remember that the aperture is your strobe because your strobe is actually like a pulse. So it only happens once and that's when it's being captured. Now the ambient light is constant, so that means if you leave your shutter time longer, it will actually accumulate to a higher f-stop. If you have your shutter speed shorter, it will actually accumulate to a lower f-stop. So that means that when you shoot something, let's say on f8, 125th of a second, and you have those little lights in and you want those lights to be brighter, you don't change your ISO, you don't change your aperture, but what you do is you lower your shutter speed and at that point the lights will get brighter. And this is a really cool trick, you set it up for the brightest light possible and then you are in trouble because there's one thing you also have to remember. In the studio most strobes are limited to 160th of a second or 125th of a second. That's called your X-Sync. In other words, if you go higher, you will get a black bar. So, and that's your second shutter curtain, of course. Now, what you want to do with a setup like this is you actually set it up for the darkest possible option. So, you set it up, you look at those lights, and you go like, okay, this is, I think I like this, but maybe I want it a little bit brighter. That's the one you set up, because that's 125th of a second. Now, when you shoot it and you want a little bit more in those lights, you literally just lower your shutter speed. You can't go up but you can go down. Now, of course, you can go up if you use systems like high sync, hyper sync, or high speed sync. Let's just keep it easy for the studio. We are limited to 125th of a second. That's just how studio strobes at the moment in 2018 work. And another thing was with this backdrop, of course, that reflection. And the reflection is something called angle of incidence is angle of reflection, or angle of reflection is angle of incidence. That means that when we set up the strobe, because we wanted to mix those tungsten light bulbs with the strobe, I actually have to make very, very sure, certain that that angle of that strobe is exactly correct to the backdrop, because every other setup, you'll actually get that reflection back on the backdrop, and that's really ugly. So I didn't want that. Now, of course, one of the things that you first do is you go all the way to the back, you shoot your images, and that's it. And that's what most people do. What I like to do is actually go really close to the model, sit on the floor, use a wide angle and just shoot up and use that, that leg, for example, to really just point your viewer, the eyes of the viewer, of course, straight to your model. So that's a really powerful technique. I always say a wide angle em uh, distorts, embrace that distortion and create something that's really cool. So that's what we did here. So we mixed tungsten light with strobes, made sure that angle of incidence is angle of reflection was understood so that you don't have any stuff on the backdrop and this is by the way the cool thing also about the Hensel system again all the modifiers can be turned around completely and you can keep turning them around it's just how the system is uh, designed we're using a strip light here and by using the angle of the strip light you can of course totally manipulate your light so you can make it like a landscape or you can make it like this or anything in between and especially with reflections it's a really really cool tip so Make sure that you just level that softbox the way that you want it. Let's go to the final setup. for the final setup it was really easy we had to squeeze that one in because somebody wanted to know how to use a light meter so I just squeezed that set in it's the model Annika against the backdrop and we use a small softbox in this case the Grand Mini 85 with a light tools grid inside and just aimed it under an angle at the model and what I just like is I like that gritty backdrop it wasn't really something that was fitting for the workshop but it's it's just a cool shot and I, I really like the way that it turned out so that was the whole workshop for today. Now, of course, if you want to see more, 
make sure you check out all the other behind the closed doors because in behind the closed doors we take you behind the closed doors literally during the workshops and after each set i tell you a little bit about it but also make sure to check out quite frankly because in those video web podcasts we actually discuss new products like the new Certo from Hensel. It's a really cool new strobe, we did a video on that. And we also give you information about for example new products without doing a review. So it's just like more a news and review channel. The other one that's really important is Digital Classroom. And that's a little bit my, my favorite, to be honest. Because Digital Classroom is once a month a live stream from our studio where you guys can interact with us during the photo shoot. But it's also smaller tips videos. And Digital Classroom is made possible by BenQ and Rogue. So make sure you check that out. Well, that was all for today. If you like what we do, subscribe to our channel. Leave comments below. Smash that like button because we really like that. And of course, tell other people about it so we can grow our channel. And again, any questions you have, just leave them in the comments below. And to help us out on YouTube, just press that like button, please. Because if you press that like button, we get higher in rankings. And if you leave a comment, that's even better. Just put there like, hey, we liked it. We're really grateful for that. Thank you so very much for watching, guys. Tomorrow, another workshop, another behind the closed doors. See you again tomorrow. Bye-bye. Okay, the first set was really, really easy. We started with a an Hansel cra uh, 